Okay, I think we'll make um, a start. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Arts Council of Northern Ireland Creative Individuals Recovery Programme webinar. My name is Kieran Scullion. I am the head of music and opera at the Arts Council. And I'm delighted today to be joined by my colleagues um, across arts development, heads of art forum and departments, Jilly Campbell, head of education and community arts, and Suzanne Lyle, the head of visual arts, along with um, colleagues in our comms teams and in our operations teams. Our session will last one hour today. Uh, the session is being recorded um, and will be available on the Arts Council's YouTube channel tomorrow or Friday, so just keep an eye out for it. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat function. We'll keep an eye on that um, as we're going along and we'll, we'll have time to address those questions specifically, um, probably in about 30 minutes time. If you have any burning questions thereafter, you know, feel free to contact uh, any member of the Arts Council staff and all of the details will be on the website. I'd also just draw your attention now too to um, the Arts Council's website, artscouncil-ni.org, where there will be guidance notes which are very comprehensive and frequently asked questions which are also comprehensive in relation to this programme and encourage you to read those. Okay, I think we've probably done all of the housekeeping. So if we could start the presentation, please. So, as I just mentioned, the guidance notes and the frequently asked questions uh, and the application form are available on our website. If you have any um, access needs, if you need um, help or a copy of anything in larger font or in a different language, please uh, contact us at artsgrants at artscouncil-ni.org. Uh, and to discuss an application with any art form officer, please visit our website and find the staff listed there with their contact details. Thank you. So, this programme has been co-designed by the Department for Communities and the Arts Council um, and represents our ongoing support to the sector during this um, COVID-19 pandemic, which has devastated the sector and in particular those creative practitioners working in it. As you can see here from the objectives of the scheme, the overriding objective is to help individuals reconnect or maintain their trade, their profession or vocation within the creative sector as it emerges from the coronavirus pandemic restrictions. I suppose taking into account the diversity of the sector is difficult to be very prescriptive, but the scheme will typically meet one-off costs that are necessarily incurred and indeed essential to the individual re-engaging with or maintaining their practice. The programme will support actions to reverse the erosion of creative practice and loss of skill and experience to the creative sectors. Okay, next slide, thank you. The programme is to help support self-employed and freelance individuals working in the creative sector, including but not limited to those range of people. So if you see yourself in the who in there, then great. If you don't, and you're concerned about whether you're in the creative sector or not, just ask. But it's, a, it's to support self-employed and freelance individuals working in the creative sectors to sustain and build professional and technical skills and to support those who wish to deliver creative projects. And we'll come on to that a little bit um, uh, in the next few slides. Please note, this program is not designed to replace loss of income as a result of COVID. So it's not a hardship fund. It's not if you apply to the um, Individual Emergency Resilience Fund um, previously. It's not the IERP program uh, and it's not hardship. So unlike other emergency programs, we will require applicants to undertake activity linked to their practice. And that activity can be technical or artistic and it must be delivered by the 31st of March, 2022. We've been fielding uh, applications currently and um, some applications have been ineligible because 
they're requesting start dates before decisions would be made. So, you know, you have to be really careful that your project will be, you will start the project in December. You know, decisions are likely to be out end of November, early December. So with that in mind, you might think to be on the safe side, middle of December starting point for, for your project and that it will be delivered by the end of March. It's an important point to make. Um, if you've already received funding from the Arts Council in 2021, you can still apply to this program, importantly. Thank you. So the total budget available is £5 million, and we're offering individual awards of up to £2,000 to reactivate or maintain an applicant's trade, profession, or vocation. Now, that's up to £2,000. Your project may cost £4,000. You'd have to tell us where the balance is coming from. Uh, you may apply for less than £2,000, but you can't apply for more than £2,000. You must set out the costs that you would necessarily incur and without which you would struggle to resume your practice. And as I said, where the costs exceed the £2,000 award ceiling, you must set out the costs that you are applying for. If you're a disabled, deaf, disabled, um, you may apply for up to an additional £500 towards personal assistance to support you for disability, deaf access requirements. Now, importantly, um, capital equipment will not be funded from this programme. However, we will consider providing support for the cost of materials up to a maximum of £500 where they are necessary to help you reactivate or maintain your trade profession or vocation. And as I said, further details is available on the uh, guidance notes and frequently asked questions. Before I hand over to Suzanne, um, just want to remind you that the closing date is this day week. So it's 12 noon um, this day week. There's likely to be high traffic to the system. So I would encourage you to get it in um, as early as possible. Uh, and to remind you that the completion date for the award is the 31st of March 2022. So if you have any questions at all in relation to anything that I've just said, please uh, include that in the chat and we'll deal with it shortly. Okay, Suzanne, thank you. Hello, all. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the next bits in the guidance notes and eligibility for the scheme. Uh, so I'll just walk you through some of that. Applicants for the scheme need to be over 18 and living in Northern Ireland. Applicants will, own, or sorry, applications will only be accepted online. So uh, please do keep an eye out for that. If you had any access issues, you can let us know, but uh, we are expecting the forms online. Please ensure that you answer all of the questions. Um, there'll be some issues around your eligibility. If you've just skipped some, you really do need to, to answer all of them. Applicants must submit a separate CV or statement about their career uh, in the creative sector to date. Um, so. Uh, we, for some of our other grants, that's called the History of Artistic Practice. Um, it can be a purely solid CV. It's just terminology is just the same but different. So um, feel free to put in your version of your CV. Applicants must submit a separate written reference from an independent source to verify their practice. Now that's really important. Um, and I'll circle back to that um, in a moment. Um, may I have the next slide, please? Thank you. So the mandatory enclosures, meaning they absolutely have to be there, um, your CV or statement about your career, the written reference from an independent source, if applicable and for students only, a letter on headed paper from their head of department confirming that the funds that they're seeking are for work or costs that are not the concern of or not related to their, to their degree studies or any other studies. Um, if anybody were doing a master's or a PhD, they must also include a separate statement, which provides information on how the proposal differs from their master's or PhD work. The reference, just circling back to that, um, the written reference from an independent source, and then we say in the guidance notes, for example, evidence of your membership of, of a professional body or employer, promoter, venue owner, booking agent, or other things. Now, that's not just... Um, your proof of having paid your dues this year to a professional body. That's not sufficient for them just to say that you're a member. That's not it. This needs to be a reference. And they're required to confirm your role in the creative sector and that this will continue as you've described in your application. 
Uh, it should provide confirmation that you derive a significant part of your income from your creative practice, that you've experienced a loss or erosion of skills necessary for your trade, profession or vocation. So if you've, um, with the awfulness of the last year, obviously, if you have, um, uh, if there's something you need to do to upskill a bit or to come back slightly differently, if you're thinking about things in a slightly different way that maybe you need X, you know, as a skills development element to cope with the new reality or still COVID impacted world, then that's absolutely fine. Um, so the reference should also uh, confirm that you were impacted by work restrictions imposed by COVID protocols. So you couldn't work, for example, in the theatre sector because that wasn't happening in whichever aspect of that it was from lighting to goodness knows what else or, you know, other things. Um, and it should confirm that you might otherwise uh, need to leave the sector, to, you know, to, to earn income elsewhere. So the idea with this grant is to support you as you're coming through this period to um, to develop, to emerge from this um, in terms of your practice. So as uh, Kieran has said, it's not a hardship fund. It's to, to look at things slightly differently. Next slide, thank you. Um, so eligible costs. We'll look at ineligible in a minute, but the eligible costs. Creation of new work or engaging with new or existing audiences or a new commission, for example. Um, that's absolutely fine. It can be the development of a project that you have, but this needs to be spelt out as a new phase of that. If, for example, you'd applied for funding before or you've been working on something, please be clear that this next period of work funded potentially by this grant would be, you know, developing on the ideas that you have or the ideas that you've been working with um, and taking that forward during this next period. Uh, also eligible cost, skills improvement necessary to reactivate or maintain your trade, profession or vocation. So it could be upskilling in some particular thing to, to cope with the new reality. Um, and you tell us what, what that is for you. Uh, also eligible hiring facilities and or equipment to facilitate your creative practice, including rehearsal um, necessary for the resumption or the maintenance of an individual's trade, profession or vocation. Um, also, you could uh, have time set aside to update, develop or enhance your um, skills your, in whatever aspect. You could attend an industry event um, or other related element. And as you see there, peer-to-peer uh, -peer engagement or professional stroke membership fees of associations related to an individual's career development. So that might cushion the cost of that in this um, forthcoming year, but it can't be a cost that you've already paid. Um, these things have to be from the date that you would hear about the grant onwards. So we would say early December on uh, at the point that you're paying it. Um, other costs that you might consider and we might consider reasonable to assist in maintaining or developing your practice um, could be an element of skills. We've talked about that more broadly, but it's just something related to this, to your development and maintaining your practice. If you needed a support worker or other costs related to supporting uh, someone with a disability as required um, as part of your creative practice, then of course um, you can apply for money for that. Ineligible costs, um, loss of income. That's not what this scheme is. Um, the other schemes that we've had were, were slightly different. So just as we emerge now, this isn't about loss of income, but really about making sure you're ready to, um, to emerge with society coming out again into things. So not about loss of income. It's not about living expenses either. That's not eligible in this round. Capital costs, as Karen has noted. Um, so that can be things like cameras, iPads, computers, laptops, not eligible. Musical instruments, minor refurbishment works, not eligible in this particular round. Uh, materials we've talked about um, can be eligible, but it's, um, it's not about capital costs in this. Uh, also ineligible work that forms part of an academic course and we've talked about that in relation to references um, and please do have a look at our frequently asked questions for further information on that uh, but it shouldn't be anything that is part of a course. That's not to say you couldn't do a small course we're talking here about academic courses of a you know several months years to to achieve so it could be a short course to skill you up in something um, in particular that's okay but not not a long-term kind of course. 
Um, also ineligible applications for projects or commissions or any other costs which are already in receipt of public funding. We can't double fund what you're doing. So if you've already received a grant from somewhere um, related to that, then, then it's not what you apply for or top up or anything else in this one. Eligibility checking. Um, the Arts Council will undertake an eligibility check on the application for completeness when it comes in. If one or more mandatory enclosures have not been submitted with the application, the application will be deemed incomplete and therefore ineligible and it won't proceed to assessment. So please do just double check when you're when you're hitting that submit button that you have absolutely everything attached to that. Details of those mandatory or compulsory enclosures are outlined on page six of the guidance notes. And please note it's your responsibility to ensure that the enclosures meet the requirements of the programme. So the things like the references, the other things, they should have ticked the boxes for the things that should be included in the reference. So please do have a look at that, you know, as they come in from your referees to, to make sure in case it needs a tweak before it's submitted. Um, and again, further details of those mandatory enclosures are available from our frequently asked questions. Um, in the eligibility checking kind of phase, um, the Arts Council will issue a notification, either acknowledging receipt of the application or advising of its ineligibility. Where the application is deemed as eligible, the Arts Council will assess the application on the following factors. The applicant's CV and continued contribution to the creative sector since April 2019 to date, and also the benefit that this project or activity will have to the applicant's trade, profession or vocation in assisting with sectoral recovery. So the things that will benefit you, it could be um, on the visual arts side of things. So it could be creating you know, something of a new body of work to take you forward to exhibition. It'll be different across the disciplines. It's just whatever it is for you. Maybe it's just about a training thing to upskill you in some way, um, but you can have a think about that. Um, I'm just pausing on which slide I'm on. I think, is this a handover to Jilly at this point? Yes, it is, Suzanne. Thanks very much, Jilly. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to, uh, my, my computer is telling me that much like myself, my internet is, is unstable. So um, <laughs> bear with me in case it, it falls apart. Um, but I will, I'll crack on with, with what we've got. So um, how we will assess applications. So we will assess the strength of your application based on your role in the creative sector and the benefits of how the award will uh, affect your development of your practice and the contribution that it will make on the sectoral recovery, so the sector that you're a part of. Um, we rank applications as high, medium or low against these factors and only high or medium scoring applications will be eligible for funding. So once uh, we've done all the scoring, your application will go through to uh, a kind of a decision meeting, uh, which is called a moderation meeting. And in that meeting, uh, we would discuss all of the, uh, the high or medium scoring applications and see where we get to in terms of the, the budget being spent. Next slide, please. So the application. So um, you'll talk about your role in the creative sector uh, in no more than 300 words. That's in addition to attaching your CV um, or career statement. Um, you'll tell us about your proposal. So essentially what you're applying for in no more than 300 words. And you'll tell us when you're going to start the project. So remember, I think we have said that uh, the project can't start before the 1st of December, because that's when we'll be making decisions. So the projects need to, to take place after the 1st of December um, and needs to complete by the 31st of March in order to be eligible. Um, the reason this funding needs to be completed by the end of March is because it's um, government exchequer funding, it's emergency COVID funding, and it has to be completed within this financial year. So in terms of the benefits of the proposal, you'll be telling us about how this will, how the proposal or getting funds to deliver the proposal will assist you in reactivating or continuing with your profession um, during the pandemic and, and how it will maintain and enhance your creative practice and, and help you recover within the sector that you work in. 
There's another box about need, and it, it simply says, would the project um, or activity go ahead without this funding? And this is a simple yes, no answer. And I would say that most people will obviously be saying, well, it's likely that the project won't go ahead without the funding. And that's what we want you to say, if that's the case. So if it's successful, um, you'll get a letter um, or you'll be informed by email because we're doing all correspondence um, digitally at the moment. And you'll read your letter and it will tell you about the date that you have to complete your funding by, which will be you have to complete the project by the 31st of March 2022. We'll also tell you what we're allocating the funds to, and that might be slightly different from what you've applied for. So just make sure that um, you've, you've read that. And also what's really important is fill in your BACS form by the date outlined in the letter. So your BACS form is essentially um, the method that we use to be able to pay you the award. Also keep all of your original receipts um, and only spend the grant on what we've allocated it towards um, and make sure that you, you keep all of this ready for your final report that you'll need to submit to the Arts Council. Um, if there's going to be any changes to your project, and it's likely there will be because we are living through a pandemic and things change and we understand that things change. So if there are going to be changes, you just need to um, agree that in advance with your relevant art form officer. If your application is unsuccessful, we will provide you with kind of brief feedback in your letter that informs you that unfortunately your proposal is or your application is unsuccessful. But if you want to hear more or, or go into detail about that, you can you can do that with you can do so with your relevant art form officer. Next slide, please. So all decisions regarding applications um, are obviously made by the Arts Council Board. Um, the officers and um, senior management um, will make recommendations that ultimately go through to a board. Um, and we will consider and assess your application based on its score. Um, and I have to say, although you may be eligible for funding, um, we can only really give uh, funding where the score has been high and if we have the avail available budget. Um, if you're not happy with the way we've handled your application, you can access a copy of the complaints procedure on our website. And that's a review procedure, um, but you can only um, ask for a review if you believe we've not followed or, um, our published process uh, when dealing with your application. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use the, the, this procedure um, to appeal against the decision only if we haven't followed our um, procedures. So I think what's really key with regards to this is that if you if you do get funded, we'll be really clear about what we're funding. If we're not able to fund you, um, we'll let you know where you scored a, uh, perhaps a low score or a lower score um, uh, on your in the assessment of your application. OK, I think this is back to you, Kieran, I think. Are you there, Kieran? Or maybe maybe his computer's become unstable. Well, I'll carry on here. <laughs> so um, other useful information, um, uh, what we will do is produce a list of all the grants that we fund and that will go on our website and it will also be published um, in any any articles or any, any newsletters. Um, so we will publish your name and the details of what you have received the award for, that will be published. Um, we also adhere obviously to data protection. As Suzanne's already mentioned, all the applications need to be um, done online um, and uh, you'll get email notification to confirm that uh, your, your email has, has got, or your application has gone through. Next slide, please. Okay, I think thank we're moving you, on. Are you there, Kieran? Yes, I'm back okay. now, yes, thank you. Right. Thank no you very problem. Much. Okay, uh, thank you both to Suzanne and Jilly for that. Um, just to let you know, the Frequently Asked Questions document that's on the website is a kind of rolling document that's updated as we're dealing with any issues or questions or queries that's coming in um, with applications that are arriving in the system as we speak. Just to say that any questions that we're going to deal with now in the chat, if they're not um, featured in the Frequently Asked Questions as it currently exists, it will be updated um, to include. Okay, so. There are a few, okay, so there are a few questions coming through the question and answer, and there are a few questions in the chat. So I think we'll deal, let's we'll deal with the Q&A first. We've got 30 minutes or so, and please, if you think of anything else whilst we're um, doing this, just pop it into the chat. 
Okay, first question from an anonymous attendee. If you've applied for other funding for the project, you wish to also propose to CIRP and are awaiting the decision on this other funding, should you propose the project still for CIRP or another project? I think what we've said there, I think we've kind of answered that in that you would have to show that it the activity is additional. I know you're waiting on the result of some things. You have to weigh up whether or not, and there's a bit of flexibility as the world changes, I suppose. So my yeah. advice would be to keep it separate right I would now keep, I would keep and it wait separate. until the funding decision on the other one has come through. And if that's successful, great. It will further, you know, you'll be able to further develop the work, but keep them very separate for now. Yeah, Karen, can I? Yes, um, add on to that. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if you're referring to um, perhaps it might be the Minority Ethnic Artist uh, Mentoring and Residency Programme. Um, and really any of our funding programmes, they need to be separate projects. So don't apply for the same project to um, any of our programmes. They need to be separate projects. Um, Owen Robinson, would equipment rental fall into the category of material costs? No, I think that would be a separate line. It's not necessarily material costs. Material costs may be, um, I think from the music perspective, say um, you wanted to work on some vocal technique and you wanted to purchase some scores uh, to help you do that and you were taking intensive lessons or something like that, then it, um, they would be that would be classed as material, but, but you would have to tell us how that material is um necessary for you to reinvigorate your creative practice you know so if you identify a particular need for example vocal fach is changing or something like that and you want this material to be able to it's that it's that type of thing jilly suzanne anything to add no not so much um Kieran, sorry it's paul here sorry suzanne Go for Go it. Yeah. No, I was just wondering. I've maybe just read that question slightly differently. I'm wondering: is the is Owen asking, um, would equipment rental uh, be be considered a mater material? Rather, is that what is that is that what's being asked? I wonder. In which case, I think the key thing is, as others have said, this is not. A capital program. This isn't so yeah. you know that we can't we can't fund any equipment purchase in this. So that is clearly you know not something that's allowed. But you could make a case that you if it's part of in in the same way as you might make a case for hiring something, hiring a space. You could make a case for hiring equipment for a set period of time within the uh, time of the program, and uh, you know, and that might be something that would be considered under assessment. But as you've said, I think, Karen, it's not, it's not that you're classing that as materials. No, it would be a separate line. I mean, someone yep. needed to hire material to put on a project, you know, between December and March, and they needed um, to hire a PA system um, because they were putting on a gig or something, then yes, that's absolute, but it should be a separate line. Uh, material costs are, you know, much smaller, okay? Suzanne, were you, try, were you going to contribute there? I was just thinking of a great big saw for a sculptor. And yes, you could rent that separately to material costs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Um, how much detail is required for the costs of the activity and are receipts required to be submitted afterwards? Yeah, I think Suzanne dealt with that. Isn't that right? Anything else to add um, there, Suzanne? Well, let's have a think. Um, yes, uh, detail is required. Break it down, absolutely break it down. Um, and uh, in detail would be great um, because you will be held to that then when receipts are asked for at the end so yes you do need the receipts so those are for the certainly materials costs and indeed rental or anything else um, if you were uh, looking at time as an element um, Paul I wonder um, in terms of that would we want to add any detail there maybe just lost Paul leaning over to the side there uh, Paul we query on um, if it were buying time for example how we would evidence that or how somebody would evidence that. Do we have anything uh, in mind? I think Andrea's going to be chipping in, but Andrea, you're okay. on mute there. Sorry. Yeah, I think what we'd be looking for is a breakdown of their time spent at dealing with, you know, if it's time set aside um, with details of what um, the rate, the appropriate rate would be. So yes, we'll be looking at breakdown. Yeah. 
Thank you. Both at application stage and then at post project stage. Thanks very much. This next one is for you as well. Suzanne, can you give examples of references a visual artist might supply? Oh, um, gallery um, that you've maybe shown in or worked with or a commercial, uh, that was public gallery, but also a commercial gallery maybe that sells your work or knows what you're doing. Or um, if you're involved usually in maybe working in schools or running projects or things for youth groups or in community settings, they could also evidence that you, you know, or say that, you know, you are committed to visual practice and you've worked with them and they know that you want to continue in the sector and in that way. So just whatever whatever is appropriate for you yeah great thank you does the reference have to be directly involved in say the project that i want to do for example i teach gig and other things but the project is an ep so i'm not sure who my employer would be that's directly associated with that part of my practice thanks in advance okay daniel no the the reference in fact i would say should not be involved directly in the project it should be it should sit just for cleanliness clearness you know transparency outside of the project but the, um, as we've mentioned it should be someone who knows your practice that can, knows what your contribution to the sector is the person doesn't have to be living in northern ireland it could be references from anywhere but they must um, understand your work anything else to add there anyone no great do activities need to take place within northern ireland or can activities take place across the island? So I would say the activity needs to take place within Northern Ireland. However, if you were buying time, it could take place, I suppose it could take place anywhere. It depends what you're, you're living in Northern Ireland, so you're the beneficiary. So the activity could take place anywhere am i right in saying that yeah i think the activity yeah. can can take place anywhere as anywhere. long as the, the beneficiary is yeah. is you um, and you're yeah. based here in northern ireland the activity can take place anywhere okay wish to ask something regarding eligible costs under producing a new work can applicants seek funding for creative costs for composition rehearsing recording and editing yes that's a project that's absolutely eligible How much, do, how do you budget your time, hours, days, or weeks, and how much can it be equity rates, Jilly? Well, yeah, I mean, we advise, obviously, there are art form areas that have specific rates of pay, and really, um, you know, if you want to budget it, if you're, if you're in the performing arts and you would use equity or ITC standard contracts, then obviously um, follow that. Um, Obviously, music will have um, different rates yes. of pay, so really in accordance with um, either your industry rates um, or what you feel you need to be paid. Yeah, uh, from a music perspective, the Musicians Union, the Contemporary Music Centre will have guidance around um, that as well. Suzanne, anything to add? No, visual, uh, we don't have rates particularly set in that way visual artists ireland do have a calculator on their website for when others are thinking of paying visual artists uh, to be involved in a project so there are various ways but whatever it is for you everyone will be unique you're all at different stages in your careers no matter what the discipline so it's just what what is what do you think is appropriate for you is it this isn't about income loss and replacement it's just about really if you're buying time for you what would that broadly be for you um, what will enable you to focus on your practice in this period so nothing set for visual um, indeed we could look to to others or to other sectors and have a think mm -hmm. great thank you uh, can a dance teacher apply for costs to cover their insurance in order to be able to continue teaching in a community setting safely costs to cover their insurance um, i should add um not every officer is here today. Um, Caelan Curry Thompson, who looks after drama yeah. and dance, isn't here. But um, if anybody has any specific queries in relation to that art form, you can contact her. And again, with literature, um, we have Paul McVeigh, who's currently standing in for the um, head of literature. If you have any queries, you can put them in an email to him. But I'm happy to um, address that that particular question here. Um, we can only support costs that are going to happen between December and the end of March 
so we can't we can't support costs that have happened prior to that time so um you know if if you want to apportion that down you could apportion it for those particular months i don't see any reason why you couldn't do that um and if those costs are to help you continue to function in your career then i think that would be an eligible cost but it would only be um able you'd only be able to look at between um december and the end of march yeah thanks julie <laughs> Uh, is it possible to include a fee for your work in your funding request? For example, if you're writing a book, can you include a writer's fee for yourself or is that not eligible? Thanks. I think we would call that buying time. So as Andrea had mentioned um, previously, you would have just have to tell us uh, how you would calculate um, buying your own time in order to do it. It wouldn't be a fee to yourself, but it, it, it's you buying your time. Uh, will the funding cover commissioning artwork for a project and printing costs, Suzanne? Um, but thrown but we bit in the content. I'd love to know more detail of it. But um, if somebody is commissioning an artwork from you, this is not money that would add to you doing that project for them. But if you want to create an artwork speculatively or somewhere or just as part of your practice and heading towards a gallery or exhibition or anything you hope you know in the long run that's fine um printing costs not sure what they relate to but um potentially i'm thinking fine art printing kind of side but i don't know yeah. if that's what you mean but um happy to answer queries if anybody wants to to email um any of the visual team afterwards no problem right individual artists come together to rehearse perform the same project and share costs of hiring director venue absolutely i mean we've seen a lot of um kind of ensemble working um as a result within uh, a number of these programs but you have to just be very clear that you're not double funding in in anything that um and, and do reference do tell us this is part of a collaborative um project and we just have to make sure that and you know name the other people that are involved in it um, we've seen lots of band members for example apply uh, for something that obviously means that they have to you know, produce it all together so that's absolutely fine just be very clear we'll, we'll have a very um, close eye on the budget when it comes to that and ensure there's no double funding um, Will the funding cover commissioning artwork for a pro sorry I read that I was wondering if expanding workshops if expanding workshop would classify for funding. We've two here that might be uh, similar. Will I pick those up? Um, I was yeah. wondering if expanding the workshop. I wonder. Um, just seeing part of the word maybe jewelry there uh, in the title. It uh, not. I'm kind of picking up as visual, but feel free to correct us. Um, not if it's a capital cost. If it's um bits of wood and the partition walls or anything else like that it's not about um for, the, for us those are capital costs of actually you know building something effectively the next question then is also i've been building a studio over the last few months is the cost of materials for the next phase of the build yes that is capital funding so no it's yeah. not eligible in this in this particular grant scheme yeah just to echo that paul here again suzanne i think you're absolutely right certainly nothing in the sense of materials for a capital project building or expanding a studio workshop would not be, those would be considered capital, so they wouldn't be fundable under this scheme. Would recording in a studio for an album go towards new work costs? It can do. Um, it can simply just be recording costs in the studio and whatever the daily rate is that you want us to contribute towards. It's fine. Uh, I guess it's me again. Yeah. <laughs> is that, I wonder is that benches. Um, but again, that's probably a capital cost of establishing your workshop. It is it is equipment, so that's not what this round is about, I'm afraid. Um buy materials for the jewelry that you're making, but um not the the kind of furniture of the workshop, I'm afraid, in this round. Mm -hmm. I was asking what is an appropriate rate per hour for a musician to rehearse if applying for time bought? Again, reference down the, the MU at the, uh, the rates and look at what you feel is appropriate for your practice. Uh, it's a bit like commissioning, you know, there are guidelines, um, but uh, you have to tell us why you're attracting a certain fee. And, um, and I say that the, um, the MU is there 
and to provide the benchmark for that. Uh, but if you want to run anything by me in advance, that's okay. Okay, it is benches in terms of <laughs> Thanks, jewelry. <Sarah. laughs> Another Darren, my proposal includes an artist fee for me to write and produce my own songs. It often makes it often takes me a longer time to complete projects due to a disability, which causes joint inflammation and fatigue. Can I apply for the five hundred additional to cover the extra time that it takes me to complete the songwriting production costs? Jilly, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, it's probably um, I think f for your own benefit, Darren. Um, just talking about something, um, I'd be happy to follow this up separately out out of this meeting just because um this is a bit, you know it's it's personal to you so i think um i mean the the whatever if if you're a disabled artist we essentially don't prescribe what what you need if you need you need to identify to us um what are the access costs and if there are access costs um that are in relation to I'm taking further time than you would need to demonstrate that in your application, but, but I'd happily follow this up um, in tandem with Kieran. Obviously, it's music um, yeah. uh, separately. If you want to send us an email, we can do that, Darren. Okay, if I have lived away for part of the pandemic, but I'm from Northern Ireland and based here now and have a history of contribution to the sector, am I still eligible to apply? Yes. Um, Emma. Can you apply for membership to an organization that is also SENI AFP funded? I'm trying to figure out. I could imagine that in printmaking or other things. I'm wondering on the ops side, um, Paul or Andrea, any thoughts on that? I suspect not, but I'm holding to hear. Well, again, it would need to be if if it is eligible, it would need to be proportionate for the the time period. Yeah. Paul, is okay. that okay? Membership. In yes. No, I think what you and Julie have said is right. I mean, the thing would be we we can't get into situations where we end up sort of double funding either. Mm -hmm. You know through whether that's to an organization or to an individual. So if you make it maybe a case by case sort of answer, um, in that if there's something there as Jilly has said, within the time period allowed under this, um, and it's not being funded, that element of the organization's funding isn't going to do that. So it's not double funding, then we could look at it. Okay, uh, can you provide a clearer definition of what would qualify as material costs rather than capital costs? For example, could I request 500 pounds to go towards purchasing a computer to enable the writing, demoing and production of an album? No is the no answer to that. It's yeah, so I, I, Just to explain, it's not just so everybody's aware, it's not that we're trying to be awkward in any way, it's just we can't run a capital programme with this money. So anything that is a capital um, expense just can't be funded in, the, in through this funding pot. So yeah, no, no purchasing of computer, I'm afraid. Can you still be a reference for others if you're applying yourself? Yes, you can. Uh, Paddy, could a musician use the funding to fund a concert or several concerts, venue hire, publicity, travel, etc.? If so, would the tour have to take place between those dates and would you need a detailed outline of the tour dates and venues before funding was awarded? Yes, you absolutely would. I mean, that's a, that's a project that you'll be applying for. Now, bear in mind, it is only £2,000 contribution, but we would need to see, yeah, you can hire the venue, you can, you can apply for a contribution to publicity and travel, etc. If you're talking about a tour, we need to see the tour schedule, date, times, venues, um, and that would all need to be in place, agreements in place with the venues, et cetera, as well, and what the split would be. I suppose in that case, you know, you may be presenting a budget that's maybe in excess of £15,000, and you, you know, you'd be asking us for two towards certain elements, and you'd have to make sure that it's, it's within the time frame of the award. Okay, can the material cost budget of £500 cover making copies of a CD album or printing a book? No, I'm sorry. Um, again, I don't think that's eligible. Maybe, I mean, perhaps in the, the um, frequently asked questions, we'll give examples of what materials, you know, might look like, which might be helpful. 
If making an album with other musicians, will this funding still be eligible for us? If making an album with other musicians, will this funding still be eligible for us? If you're a musician and you're making music with other musicians, you all have to apply separately. It you will be eligible if you are if you meet the eligibility criteria. Uh, if you're talking about a joint project, yes, you can apply for um, the same project. Just ensure that there's no duplication of uh, requests uh, to cover costs. As Paul said, that would be double funding. Would the funding cover CD manufacturing? Um, We can't hear you, Karen. If you're talking, you're muted. Don't know. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear any answer to that one. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know what happened there? Everything just froze. <laughs> um, if making so, where was I at? If making an album with other musicians, will this funding still be eligible? Yes, we did that. Would, yes. the, fun would the funding cover CD manufacturing? Uh, it can do within um, a project if you were looking to record. Bear in mind, it is only you know the two thousand pounds. But if you're if you're a recording project and you were looking to release something, you could get your CDs mastered or uh, manufactured. Great, thanks, Darren. Okay, thank you, Emma. Have we reached the end of? We have more questions, I think, in the other chat bit, the more usual chat rather than Q and A. So. Okay, would you go to that, Suzanne? Because I can't see sure. that. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. It's maybe where dot 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 is on yes, your screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've got Gosh. It. Scroll through those. Let's see. Would you be able to provide mm -hmm. a clearer definition of what would it, what would qualify as material costs rather than capital? Could I request five hundred to go towards purchasing a computer? No, that would allow me to write a demo. So capital is anything that's a fixed asset. Um, Whereas materials are what you would need, you need to you need to have these materials in order to create your work. But it's not, uh, it's not capital, you know. So it could, it could be a, if you were looking to run workshops, for example, you know, it could, it could and you said you needed, um, a flip chart and pens, something as simple as that, and you said why. Potentially, you know, that's a that, and you make the case that this, that that's a a piece of material that you need to be able to to use. You know, I mentioned scores for various um uh, for various needs within music. Um, other materials, I'm trying to think. Suzanne, paint. you may yes. paint brushes, canvases, um, anything and everything in that run. Jilly, anything else from your perspective there? Yeah, I think it's more about the the durability. I think materials are, are consumables, yeah. things that you 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 know have to um, like paint. Um, you know, whereas that are equipment used up and transformed. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Whereas equipment tends to fall into, as Kieran said, it's their assets, their um, their hard and fast pieces of yeah. equipment that don't um, that don't go that don't go anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just again, Paul here, I agree with that completely. I think that's the definition that we would have to use, you know, capital's fixed assets, materials are consumables Super. really. And I suppose the, in, in drawing up the scheme with the department, we were saying we are, we can't fund capital equipment. We do recognize that there may be a case to be made for materials. So within this, there's a, an element that up to 500 pounds can be considered, but it's not that we're, we expect to see applications being primarily about purchasing of materials. So just, yeah. you know, it's allowed within the application, but just to get your thinking around the scheme, I hope that might help a little bit. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Um, Darren, eligibility, can this fund cover mixing, mastering and getting press photos taken? Yes, you call out your project um, and that's, that's fine. Uh, Alana, should a budget be included within 300 work proposal? No, the so budget should be a separate. separate. Mm -hmm. Um, normally, you know, it's another tick, you know, a box that you've ticked to say I've, I've included my budget, which should be broken down appropriately. 
can the Graham can the reference signature be digital or does the reference have to be signed physically? Ops, good point. Over to Andrea or Paul. So um, yeah, just again to sort of hammer home the point as well. Look, we're, we we need this to be more than just um, a name, and uh, it, you need to refer to the guidance notes and the FAQs around the reference. So it does have to be a reference which needs to be signed. I think we can accept a, a digital signed reference. Um, you know, obviously we're all working in different ways at the moment, so that's okay. But just please do be clear about what we need you to say in the reference. It can't just be somebody's name or a signature from somebody. Definitely, that, will, that would get ruled ineligible. Thank you. We have about five minutes to go. What does time set aside for practice mean? Essentially, it means you're buying your own time to engage with your practice, and you tell us why that's important at this particular juncture. You calculate the time according to what you see fit. Bearing in mind, I, if I was, I would always advise if people are buying time towards the delivery of something, start with what the ceiling is at £2,000 and then see how far you think that would take you in terms of days, weeks, you know, then calculate that down in terms of hours. You know, do you want to be spending two days a week on something, buying your own time at a cost of, and see how far that will, you know, stretch out. But happy to pick up uh, anything else after um, the session if you would like to email. Who could a self-published novelist you who could a self-published novelist use as a reference? Well, as I said, Paul McVeigh isn't here at the moment, but any other publishing house I would recommend or uh, it's sorry, really a, a professional who knows your work, your work somebody yeah. of um, you know who's involved in the sector, who is a professional in the sector, who can stand over um, the quality of your work, essentially. Can the funding be used? Yes, thanks, Jilly. Um, Connor, can can the funding be used for time needed to compose new work? Yeah, and now it's not self commissioning in a way, but if you want to work on your composer, if you're working on your practice, you can um, develop new work. Any comments to that? Uh, I can't see who this is from. My reference is currently from an arts partnership with whom I've collaborated with in the past and worked on projects for them. Is this reference strong enough and to support my application, please? Or do I need to seek an alternative referee, please? Well, Jilly has kind of said it. I mean, if they know your work, you've worked with them. I mean, that's pretty strong, you know, so um, they need to understand your your role within the creative sector, the quality of your work and what your, your contribution um, to the sector is. David, uh, I'm a music producer, but also a part-time wait waiter. Am I eligible or do I have to be full-time self-employed freelance waiter? What? Or oh, he's correcting his spelling. Um, so is he eligible? He works part-time as a waiter. Yes. You yeah. don't have to be full-time self-employed as your in your artistic practice. Uh, lots you. of people have mixed portfolio careers to do this, but, but are... Yeah you know, committed fully to their practice. So does not in every moment of the day. Um, so that's okay. Um, is it acceptable to apply for progression of a project that you've been developing throughout the pandemic that has been previously funded, however, using CIRP to further develop the content onto a new path? Yes, you can just be very clear about the new path and how additional it is, but certainly yes, we're all for development. I'm seeking funding for a musical project for which I want to help I want help from vocal, from a vocal coach. Could the vocal coach act as a reference? Yes, don't see why not. If the vocal, if you've worked with a vocal coach before and they know your work, and they could attest to why your um, why you've chosen them or what they could help you achieve, then I think that adds strength to your proposal. Graham, is there a standard hourly rate for buying time? Nope, as I said before, just um, reference. Um, Graham's a musician, MU standard rates, and use that little calculator that I do with the 2000 and break it up, see how far it will go. Will you still be able to apply if you're if you're in work in your sector, i.e. a Christmas show? Yes, of course, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, what is the rate of, we've discovered rate of, or we've discussed rate of pay. Um, what counts as a reference? We've discussed that, someone who knows your work, your sectoral, contribution, uh, your practice, your role? Um, does it have to be artistic or a specific project or can it be something more mundane like 
allowing time on administrative tasks to promote develop work. Yes, that's eligible. Yeah. Administrators, if anyone was working within any creative practitioners working within um, the arts, you would have to, of course, tell us what would be what you would do with your time, what your hopes are. You know, are you looking at reigniting your international connections, you know, or, you know, tell us what you're doing at the time or what your proposal is. But yes, it's eligible. Can it be to undertake training, learning to use software? Not necessarily a paid for a course, but time to devote to it. Yep. Yes. You just need to tell us where the training is coming from. Mm. Not just, you know, sitting, you know. Um, you could, yes, as long as you work your way through it and, and can outline why it's valuable to you to yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do need an itemized and costed budget. Uh, again, a referee query comment. I work in a freelance capacity as a proofreader, editor with multiple clients, but none I would feel comfortable divulging my financial setup with in fact i think it may weaken our relationship if as i understand the requirements they need to be explicitly say in the reference that i would be unable to continue as a freelancer without financial support yeah Suzanne? Uh, i'm looking to ops as much on that but um i was going to say no i completely understand your concern mm -hmm. so in the getting through that um could they say, I am looking to ops at this point, that it's um, for our ops team, sorry, we're saying that as our operations colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, that it's they know that the pandemic has impacted on the mm -hmm. sector and the work that's been available. Would that be a roundabout think, way? Thoughts welcome. Jilly, I think, that would, you, mm -hmm. I think yeah. that would be sufficient. I would say is that the pandemic has in a, adversely impacted upon on their creativity and their the work, their role mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I, sorry. sorry. No, 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 I, I agree with what's being said. I think you need to find a form of words that will be acceptable to you as an individual and with the person you're seeking the reference from. Um, I can understand it could be a bit delicate, but look, I just refer you to what we put in the facts around what a reference should be like and who it should be from and, you know, why we need it. So, um, if you can get a referee that can vouch for you as someone working in the field you say you're working in um, uh, and you know it it meets those requirements for us then I think that that's sufficient yeah. I... okay thank you if the creation of the new work as music, is it okay to submit a score as evidence of completion or would a Sibelius demo suffice either or? Um, depends, is, is this, are you thinking of that the 2000 will complete the work? Will it get to a certain draft? It depends on the scale, Connor, and the, you know, all of that that you know. Uh, so either would suffice. Uh, would software or online subscriptions be classified as capital costs? No. Can a manager apply for additional lighting sound hire costs in relation to one of his artist, artist's forest music video shoot? This will also include actor, dancer, prop costs, etc. possibly videographer costs. They're all artists that are benefiting within the um, creative economy. So yes, that's, that's absolutely fine. And the manager making the lead um, application is also part of the ecology. So yes, that's what this fund is about. Um, can you apply for funding to mix and master an album that was recorded prior to December 1st? Yes, because the activity will be, you'll mix and master from December um, to March. So just be very clear about that. Can this funding cover the cost of getting press photos taken? Yes. Could it be used to mentor or write business plans for other artists? Could it be used to mentor or write business plans for other artists? Yeah, I mean, you would just have to tell us in what, um, you know, further detail in what capacity. Um, so are you applying as an artist manager? Or are you applying? You know, um, but yes, you know. I think the, just to add that, I think the onus would be on you Again, I mean, if you want to do that, you need to be really clear that it fits the um, the criteria. 
and the criteria really is about the sorry I've got a, a puppy that's about to jump onto this computer um the, the criteria really focuses on you as an artist um or as a somebody in the the creative field um and so we want to see how this is how the project is benefiting you um so I would just be I would be careful on that one because mm -hmm. I'm not sure it does actually fit the aims of the program very particularly well um uh because just because of the criteria of this particular program so um I, I would i would just recommend that you have maybe have a look at the program again in terms of the criteria and see i mean if you feel that you can articulate it in such a way yeah. that you know you are the benefactor and it is about developing your skills or, or retaining your um your your profile and services within the sector then that, that's fine if you can do that I just think it might be slightly problematic the way our criteria has been um, shaped but um, yeah just to add to that no I, I yeah I think the, the mentoring is perhaps stronger in that, that context rather than the business plans so you'd be telling us you know if you have if your practice has been around mentoring what you've been doing and what you would continue to do but yes Julie's absolutely right Rian Hansen, would the funding cover the cost of musical instrument insurance and strings, i.e. instrument upkeep? The insurance, of, it's just for that little fixed um, period of time, those four months, um, Rian, so December, January, February and March for instrument insurance. Uh, strings, yes, technically, are consumables. I think, you're, are you talking about harp, I think? It's not the instrument, it's just a replacement of strings, yes. Also, could it be used to update health and safety plans for artists and arts organisations? Uh, so this is for individuals, not organisations. And again, I'm not entirely sure how the health and safety plans for artists are about continuing your practice. Are you talking? Are you a risk assessor for festivals, or what? You know, I need to understand where where you're coming from in terms of a an applicant. Um, so it's not it's not a good fit. From a manager standpoint, can a manager apply on behalf of one of his artists projects to assist them with costs? Yes, you can. It's for managers and it's also for um, the, the, the musicians, the artists themselves. Sorry, and Kieran, I just it might be my it might be fatigue on my part. Um, maybe I'm just not understanding that question, but obviously just going back to what Jilly said and the beneficiary of the award, it has to be the applicant. You know, it's, a, it's an award for individuals, so you wouldn't be applying on behalf of anyone else, but maybe I'm just misreading the question. The manager apply on behalf of one of his artist projects to assist them with costs. Oh, I, I misread that totally. I see what you mean, Paul. Yeah, the artist could apply the for artist could, their yes. elements. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm losing it too. It's okay. Can the money be used for digital ads for help of marketing promotion campaign? Yeah, well, you just call it your project is marketing and promotion campaign. And you tell us um, why it's important and it could be used for digital ads. Yes. Can the money be used to create a trailer that could be used to attract funders, broadcasters for a bigger film based project or a short film? Yes, that's eligible. Could it be used for travel outside of the UK for research purposes? Hmm. I don't know. I'm looking to ops for that. For yes, that so one. Paul or Andrea. Um, to be honest, I'm, that really hadn't come into discussion regarding the eligible activity. Yes, I think that's right. I'm yeah. just going to say the same thing. It's slightly thrown by it because we don't see it as a travel scheme. You know, it's yeah. not. It, it hadn't anticipated that. So I would, I would again. I think probably going back to what's been said before. If you can, you know, maybe just really go through the the criteria and what what you think would fit with the program. Certainly, we don't wouldn't have anticipated travel outside the UK as something that would be coming into this program. Okay, well, I think we can give this five more minutes if that's okay. And if we can't address all of the questions, we'll, we'll um, get them updated on the frequently asked questions and have that uh, um, updated on our website. Um, read the reference that needs to state you derive a significant part of your income from your creative practice. What is considered significant? 
As already mentioned, many people work part-time as waiters, etc., to fund creative practice. So the reference that needs to state you derive a significant part of your well, it's about um, reasonable. You know, it's 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 about reasonableness. How it's significant will mean different things, you know, to different people. If you're working, you know, part-time or full-time or somewhere in between, um, but you could be working part-time, but actually you could be earning quite a bit, you know. Uh, so it just depends on how much you're turning over. Uh, we'll have to take a view on that. You know, some people might be working one day a week at something, but actually quite lucrative, you know. So in, in comparison to their other um, sources of income. Anything else to add? Yeah, I think it's also that the reference also, you know, we, we need the reference to help us, particularly if we don't know you, or we haven't come across um, an applicant's work. It's to help inform us of your creative practice to date and the contribution that you've made within the sector. So, you know, I, I wouldn't get too, um, essentially, you know, I wouldn't get too worked up about the reference. We do need a reference. And as Paul has said, you can't just say, um, it can't just be somebody's name saying they know you. We do need a reference that, you know, articulates that this person knows your um, profession. They know what you've done in terms of contributing to the sector, because um, that then also enables us, particularly if we don't know you. Um, and this program is also open to um, a number of um, sectors part of the creative sector that we wouldn't traditionally have a relationship with so um so while we know quite a lot of artists we might not know everybody who works in the entire kind of creative um industries so um you know i, I think if 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 you work in the creative sector you'll be able your your reference or your referee will be able to um demonstrate that i wouldn't get too hung up on on the significant um element of that thanks julie um, Alana, would sharing the project online be a sufficient way to exhibit work? Um, yes. yes, there's likely to be lots of blended yeah. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think, I circling, think, yeah, back. we're circling back. Yes, yeah. thanks, Karen, so for more detail. Can I train artists? So Karen provide. Can I train artists to do risk assessments and health and safety assessment of their event or practice? So the beneficiary of the award has to be you Karen so you would have to be telling us how you're benefiting or the artists themselves apply to us separately and name you as their you know tell us why they need the training from you and they just say look we're not trained in health and safety um, or event practice and therefore we've identified Karen Smith as being the one who will mentor us because we feel this is really important as we emerge out of for me, that's stronger because without knowing your, you know, all of the detail, it's very, very difficult. But yes, I'm oh, sorry. What has she asked? I can't see that. Um, now. Yes, I'm asking for another event producer. They train others. Karen, I think we're just hesitating because we're not sure what your Role element is, yeah. for practice is, you know, within the sector. In that sense, I mean, looking at the list here of all sorts of people that can be in it. So can be touring crew you know promoters all sorts of things it's sounding so health and safety which isn't really among I, you know creative yeah. individuals recovery program so it's just you're, you're I, welcome to get in touch with us to have a further yeah. discussion yeah i think yeah. if you want to send an email to yeah. the r form them. that you work within mm -hmm. um yeah. and then we'll be able to to provide you with a bit more advice yeah sorry there's just one more um mm -hmm. That just came in, which I'll cover now from um, within the uh, chat function. Uh, I am aware this may be better in a private email, but I'm not sure to whom South African moved to Belfast about a year ago and have been involved in projects such as Over the Hill Music Collective since 2018. And as a community arts freelancer with Beyond Skin this year, I've not yet earned from any of my activities as I've not had the right to work and have been okay act a volunteer i think julie would you mind picking this up privately then with yeah. with Juanita? yeah yeah i mean i think um again this is this is about the reference yeah and you know this um obviously we'll be receiving lots of different references for potentially hundreds of applications um this stage will go through an eligibility stage so if 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 the person who receives your um if this is an eligible issue 
some we, we will know about it i think it's I, again i wouldn't get too hung up on the 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 the, the term significance in terms of, of income um i think for any artist <laughs> the term significant income is, is is rarely used together um but I, I it's about a reference about somebody saying they know your work um they because again this isn't a hardship fund remember this is about um you creating a project or creating a new work or sustaining your practice <laughs> in order to um to be able to, to keep it within the sector so i think as long as you provide a reference where the referee is talking about your work um and and obviously if you also caveat that with with it's in within your application that we know that you've not been legally allowed to work because of your status your immigration status or, or limitations then i think that on your case i think that's we, we can look at that you know we do look at things on a case-by-case -case basis where there are issues such as this could it be i'm just thinking out loud in front of the ops team it doesn't need to be a referee based in northern ireland does it it could be somebody that knows your work no, that's right. South it could Africa. be. It doesn't have to be. Your referee can come from anywhere. As long as, as yeah. Mr. Leah said, it's about this program. We want to be assured that these are applications are coming from people who say they are and that they do what they say they do and that they are create work in the creative sector. And so that's what you're. That's why we ask for the reference and it needs to satisfy us on those grounds. But it doesn't have to be a referee from here. Yeah, so just, that's OK. Just just for the rest of the participants, um, Juanita said it's not so much the reference, she has the reference, it's more to do with the income aspect, but I think as Julia said, if you make the case, uh, Juanita, within the, the application form, we will look at that because it's not your fault that you haven't been able to work and earn money and we'll take a view on it, so I would encourage you to, to apply. I just want to thank um, everybody for attending, thank my colleagues for contributing to this. Um, Leanne, was there a final slide that we can put up, which was just the um, the links again to our website, to the frequently asked questions, to the staff list? It's all there. Um, if you want to follow up with us uh, directly, um, if we haven't covered anything um, that you that we were available, and we will update the frequently asked questions for the website, and this um, recording will be available on our YouTube channel tomorrow or friday thank you all again um and just uh i suppose good luck with your applications and we look forward to receiving them <laughs>